for our next example we want to consider today, we want to look at how we can use data on vapor pressure and temperature to calculate the enthalpy of vaporization for an organic molecule. This corresponds to example 10.7 in your OpenStax textbook. And the main idea of this example is that we're going to use the clausius clapeyron equation to relate vapor pressure and temperature data and use that to calculate the enthalpy of vaporization delta H naught VAP for a specific organic molecule isooctane. So this is one of the useful things you can do in an experimental situation with the clausius clapeyron equation. The enthalpy of vaporization is what relates the vapor pressure of a covalent molecule, specifically organic molecules, at any given temperature. And so if you make just a handful of vapor pressure and temperature measurements on a pure liquid at room temperature, you can get a good determination of its enthalpy of vaporization through the clausius clapeyron equation. What we're told is that isooctane, which is a hydrocarbon, it is an organic molecule that contains only carbon and hydrogen. Hydrocarbons have funny systematic names under chemistry's nomenclature system, um, which are not technically covered in general chemistry. So by the time you moved on to organic chemistry, for those of you who are going on to organic, you would recognize that isooctane could also be named as 224-trimethylpentane, but that's not something that you need to worry about for this class. What we need to know is that isooctane is a molecule, it's a hydrocarbon, and it's a liquid at room temperature. Its real-world significance is that it has an octane rating of 100, so it's actually used as a standard when you're rating gasoline with an octane rating. We do an experiment using isooctane, and we measure its vapor pressure as a function of temperature. We find that at 34 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure of isooctane is 10 kilopascals, and at 98.8 degrees Celsius, its vapor pressure is 100 kilopascals. We want to use this information to estimate the enthalpy of vaporization for isooctane. And it says estimate here, but really we are going to calculate it. So we know now that the equation that links the vapor pressure of a liquid at any given temperature to its enthalpy of vaporization is the clausius clapeyron equation. I'm going to start writing this. I'm going to start writing this as the CC equation for short. So if you see CC equation, I've gotten lazy and I haven't written out clausius clapeyron So we are going to use the CC equation and solve for the enthalpy of vaporization delta H VAP. The form of the clausius clapeyron equation that I would prefer you use says that the natural log of the vapor pressure at the higher temperature, P2, divided by the vapor pressure at the lower temperature, P1, is equal to the enthalpy of vaporization divided by the gas constant. We're putting new units on the gas constant now, remember, more on that in a second, times the difference of 1 over the lower temperature, T1, minus 1 over the higher temperature, T2. And again, there are other forms of the clausius clapeyron equation out there, some of which would flip the terms and include negative signs. This is the version that your textbook presents, and this is the version of the equation that I'd say get used to using, because you want to use the same version of the equation each time until you become familiar with all its ins and outs. If you just Google the clausius clapeyron equation, you may find a similar but different looking equation, and you might start getting tempted to hybridize the two versions of the equation. Because of the way logs work, you can find a number of different variations on the clausius clapeyron equation out there. This is the form I'd recommend you use for problem solving in class. All right, so for the clausius clapeyron equation to work, the units on the pressures can be anything as long as they are the same. Our pressure measurements are 10 kilopascals, it's going to be P1, and 100 kilopascals, it's going to be P2. So that's okay because the temperature units are the same. The pressure units are the same. We need to have the temperature in Kelvin to use the clausius clapeyron equation. So I've gone ahead and converted T1 and T2 to the equivalent temperature in Kelvin. T1 becomes 307.15 Kelvin. T2 becomes 371.95 Kelvin. And now that we're out of ideal gas law, we're starting to use that other version of R because we need the units in R to cancel with the units in enthalpy of vaporization. Delta H, not VAP, is going to have units of kilojoules per mole or joules per mole. 
So we need to use the version of the gas constant now that has units of joules per Kelvin mole to cancel our temperature and to cancel the units in the enthalpy of vaporization. So from here on out in class, unless we're working a gas law problem, R is not going to be the value we used in chapter eight anymore. The value of R that we're going to use to solve a problem like this is 8.315 joules per Kelvin mole. Okay, with everything in the right units, we can plug in and we're going to rearrange the equation for delta H fat. The natural log of 100 kilopascals divided by 10 kilopascals on the left-hand side. Then on the right-hand side, we have delta H naught VAP divided by 8.31 joules per mole Kelvin times the difference 1 divided by 307.2 minus 1 divided by 372. Be really careful with your order of operations and how you put your parentheses in when manipulating the clausius clapeyron equation in your calculator. Syntax counts for a lot, and it's very easy to get weird answers if your parentheses are in the wrong place or your order of operations is a little bit off. So you, if you have any questions about how to properly enter this in terms of your calculator syntax, feel free to ask that question during office hours or recitations or just send me an email, and I'll try to give you a hint as to become really good with your syntax when you're using the clausius clapeyron equation. All right, so if we evaluate the left-hand side of the equation, the natural log of 10 is 2.3, and we get 2.3 equals delta H naught VAP divided by 8.315 joules per mole Kelvin, and the difference of our reciprocal temperature terms here is 0.000567, 1 over Kelvin are the units on there for now. If we then divide that temperature difference, inverse temperature difference in parentheses by the gas constant, 8.315 joules per mole Kelvin, our equation simplifies to 2.3 is equal to 0.000006819. Right now it's moles per joule times the enthalpy of vaporization. If we then divide both sides by the 0 0.00006819, we get that the enthalpy of vaporization is equal to 2.3 divided by 6.819 times 10 to the negative fifth. And that gives us an enthalpy of vaporization of 33,729 joules per mole. We could therefore, to three sig figs, we would call that 33,700 joules per mole, or we could call it 33.7 kilojoules per mole. So this is your introductory exposure to the clausius clapeyron equation. It's not too difficult. In fact, it's a pretty simple relationship to relate two things like temperature and vapor pressure for a liquid, but making sure you can handle the algebra associated with the equation and making sure you have everything in the right units are essential to have success in clausius clapeyron equation problems. And depending on what the clausius clapeyron problem asks you to do, the algebra to solve a problem may be more complex than in other versions of the problem. So if you're struggling with your clausius clapeyron equation work, and we'll look at another example of this here in a little bit, hit me up on Zoom during recitation or office hours and let's get you sorted out. It's not too bad, but sometimes it does require a little bit of practice to make sure you can deal with the algebra and the order of operations effectively.